Without any further ado, I'd like to introduce, who needs no introduction, our Deputy Commissioner, who I call the Commissioner, Kevin Smith. Good evening, everyone. So when Steve began his comments, he said that he was the last thing between you and the entree. You know what that made me? The entree, that's right. I, I, I walked around to uh, meet each and every one of you because I like to know uh, he who is about to hit me, <laughs> or she, as the case may be. I, I could not be more pleased to be back here. I, I hope that you know that we are working very, very hard. One, one more little joke. I know who played with the, the sound machine. It had to be... Uh, the Bureau of Proprietary School Supervision. <laughs> if there's something wrong, we did it. I've also learned this evening never to follow Steve Gunderson after he speaks. That was that was very very moving and very appropriate. And I want to I want to follow on his comments because Steve's smart enough to stand up here with facts and numbers to back up what what we know and what we believe. I love proprietary schools. I believe in proprietary schools. I believe in what you do, and I believe in the people for whom which you do it. The people who benefit. That's a key piece of this, folks. It's a key piece. The Board of Regents, my bosses, my new boss, Mary Ellen Elia, they know that there is a population in this state and in this nation that is systematically kept out of educational opportunities. You fill that void. You open your doors and your schools to populations that otherwise would have no option. We know that. I have said on that snowy night, a boy from Buffalo comes up to the Catskills to bring snow. I said on that snowy night four years plus ago that I believe so much that we would continue to work to one, change the perception and the image of the proprietary school sector, the post-secondary school sector, two, begin to build a Bureau of Proprietary School Supervision that was more responsive to your needs and providing you with the technical assistance and support that you need. I've nowhere near achieved that commitment and that statement. I've nowhere near. And this is on me. I'm the guy. I'm, I'm where it stops. I'm the deputy commissioner now acting bureau chief. I'm going to continue to work as long as they allow me to make sure that we continue to respond to the proprietary school's needs and interests. I know... I know that while we and the federal government, as Steve articulated, have raised expectations on this sector, we have not done enough to meet our responsibility to help you to meet, to understand and meet those expectations. I know with Steve and with you, the future for proprietary schools, post-secondary, is very, very bright. I listen to the Board of Regents. I hear them talk about the reinvention and re-engineering of career and technical education, and every opportunity I get, I say, excuse me, I have 10,000 licensed teachers, 400 licensed schools, offering seven and a half pages of career school programs. You need the infrastructure that our proprietary schools have. You need to engage it, you need to connect with it, you need to have school children across the state who have been guided toward a false promise of higher education be better prepared, better understand the pathway to the proprietary career school pathway and opportunity for education. Every single day, you and I reach into our pocket. I think I kidded last year. I reach very deep into my pocket whenever my 
my wife gets our two little dogs groomed. From dog grooming to cosmetology to a range of allied health, coding is blowing us away. We're not quite sure what to do with it. We're running as fast as we can to try to see the cloud, much less get into the cloud. Electronic signatures, electronic records. We're, we're, we're old. We act old. We don't have the best customer service, and I'm very respectful of my colleagues in the Bureau of Proprietary School. They work very, 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 very hard. We don't work as efficiently or as smart as we need to work. I know that. We don't do the kinds of things in response to the needs of the school that I know we need to do, simply put. To enable you to set the expectations that are appropriate and to enable you to meet them. I'm going to continue to pledge to you that I'm going to do everything I can to work to turn this around, to make us more responsive, to instill customer service 101, 201, graduate level ability of customer service, not because I love you, but because I love the students that you serve. That's what guides me, that's what guides you. I know we have a lot of work to do. Terry ever so gently guided me into the uh, session this afternoon where Andrew was giving uh, the finance talk and I slouched down in the back of the room. Some of you may have known I was there, some of you may have known I was there and still said what you said. <laughs> but we, we were ripped, as we should have been, as we should have been. In 2002, the law changed requiring financial records. In my opinion, we did that because we understand that your schools are business and we should have strong financial accountable accountability expectations for you and you should have them for yourselves. Schools fail on two counts. One, because they don't run their business as well, and two, because they don't serve their students well. We have to be responsible to both sides of this equation. Otherwise, our schools cannot survive, they cannot succeed, they cannot grow, and they cannot serve a growing population. There is growth in the future. I smell it, I know it. We are making progress connecting with the P-12 secondary system. The state has, the Board of Regents has opened up the door for the reinvention and re-engineering of career and technical education. Our secondary schools do not have the infrastructure. They don't have the human infrastructure, they don't have the physical infrastructure. I visited some schools recently. I see the infrastructure. I know it's there. We need to connect our post-secondary institutions with your schools. We need to figure out how we can help them to help you, you to help them. Commissioner King, now Acting Secretary King, guided us all in the New York State Education Department to remind us that school is not a, a destination. It's not an end point. It's a process by which we prepare for the rest of our lives. If a student wants a career in technical education to proceed with the rest of their lives to inform their career and their future, we need to help them to begin to plan that as early as possible in P-12 and guide them into the programs that provide the continuing education, the post-secondary education to support that. You are that sector. I love Steve's comment about owning it. We can own this. We can grow this. We need to get out of our own way. We need to stop seeing ourselves as the bad guys. We're not the bad guys, we're the good guys. I know that, I believe that. I know that we often don't treat you that way. I pledge to you that we're going to change that. We're gonna turn that around. I want this sector to grow. I want it to more than survive. Steve's right again. We're up against very, very, very strong headwinds right now. But the future is bright. I'm going to try to enable that. I'm going to work with you as often and whenever and wherever I can to make this better. I, thank you. I would be remiss if I did not take a moment to recognize our friend and our colleague, Carol Yates. Carol has served us extremely well. I want to thank her for her service in this public space. 
I want to recognize her years and years and years of service. I thank her for that. I've learned a tremendous amount from her, by her, and the work that she's done. Change happens. Change will continue to happen. My change is coming. I hope. I hope. I talked to all my contemporaries. They're all hanging up their spurs. I'm not ready, but my day will come too. I want to pass this on with a different attitude, a different place, a different sense of, of optimism and promise for the future. The changes that I've made in the Bureau, the changes that I will make in the Bureau as we go forward will all be guided by that, a brighter, better future for all of us. I thank you for your patience. I thank you for your support. And I thank you for being here and continuing to do what you do.